Today we're going to uh, just mount the tail end, put the, uh, the uh, push rods for the elevators in and get that stuff taken care of. And then uh, in the next video we'll probably move on to installing the uh, main elevator and rudder servos along with the engine plus the nose gear mounted into the fuselage. I just want to do all the external bits right now. Anyhow, here we go. So, what we've got. We have our elevators with the uh, adjustable on on it. Uh, this is a pull configuration for the up elevator, so I'm not too concerned if it actually moved a little bit. Then we have carbon fiber arrows. I like to use carbon fiber arrows because they're super stiff, super light, and obviously if it's an arrow, it's designed and built strong. So what I'm doing is using the uh, 440 uh, threaded rod, which is heavy enough uh, to get a good connection. The arrow has a uh, metallic end with a thread on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, put some CA in just to hold it. Then we're gonna oodle a bunch of epoxy around it. I have uh, about an inch of thread here. That's gonna, what's gonna be gripping in the epoxy in the tip of the arrow. So, once we get those in, then we can hook up to these guys, which we're gonna put some epoxy all around so it can not come undone. And uh, then we'll proceed with the installation. Now I'm going to uh, take the grinder and grind the inside of the uh, those metal inserts. That will ensure that the epoxy gets a, a good grip. First thing I'm going to do is get some uh, epoxy wrapped around this uh, connection doodad. Make sure that's not going to go anywhere, so we'll spray it down the thread nice and thick. Yeah, these uh, elevator control rods are all hidden inside the fuselage because it is a uh, pretty high end scale uh, model, so we don't want you know control arms sticking out everywhere where everybody can see them. I've added a good amount of CA into the um, threaded section of that uh, insert so the threaded rod will really grip to that and now I'm about to put epoxy into the rest of the uh, open well of that insert and that should uh, give me a really good grip. These uh, push rods are 36 inches long so I've uh, reinforced them with some brass tubing and this is the uh, 440 is it uh, push rod unfortunately I'd run out of the long one so uh, I needed to put these in anyhow I've marked from here to the other end which is 36 I'm just gonna push this wadding in it's just some paper towel and I'll push it in to get the depth I need And then, uh, whoops, we can go with some epoxy. That was a bit too much, so I think we'll put some more in. The paper towel is just to uh, hold the epoxy. All right, I have soldered these, so uh, they're good. The push rod goes in deep, actually to the end. I wanted to get make sure I got really good depth penetration here. So and I wanted them stiff. So now I'm mixing some epoxy with some filler. I'm just trying to ram it in there. Trying not to push the wadding down. And what I'll do is uh I'll get the tubes in. Then I'll apply some heat to it so the resin softens and runs down. All right, we'll shove one in. It's 
twisting it as we go. Get good penetration, as they say. Let's not go too far. Okay, I'm lining the bottom end, which you can't see on the film. I'm going to push this guy in now to 36. All righty. Twist it, get as much on the tube as I can, and that'll be dragged in. All right, the other end's on the mark. This guy is now going to start feeding in. The uh, heat gun I used uh, helped to set the epoxy deeper inside the well there. And now I'm just going to use some of the uh, remaining epoxy and just wrap it around and create a jacket. Give it a shot with the heat gun and that'll help it set up quicker. Obviously doing these jobs you get a lot of epoxy all over your fingers and stuff. So for those who do not know, the best way to get epoxy off is with 91% alcohol to water mix or pure alcohol. It works fabulous and clean your tools with it also. The horns are now uh, just uh, stacked vertically. My uh, draw handle <laughs> stops it from falling down. Once these guys are cured and the uh, control horns on the elevator, then we'll uh, start the installation of the elevators. All right, the epoxy is uh, semi-stiff. Not as stiff as I would like, but it's going to probably take all day to harden. So anyhow, I've uh, I've hooked up. I've hooked up the uh, the uh, control rod at this end. I've added epoxy around this gizmo. Uh, this is soldered, so it's not going to be able to twist. And on this end, as you can see, it's uh, it's got an adjustable uh, clevis, and that's because obviously I need some adjustment. But I don't want them both twisting around, so I fix the uh, rear so it can't twist. So now we're gonna look at putting it in the fuselage. So it's time to test fit. I did uh, pre-glue the uh, elevator hinges on, uh, I think yesterday. And uh, we just feed the control rod in, set the elevators, I mean the uh, hinges in place. This is always the fiddly bit. There we go. Ah. There we go. And then we've got this uh, homemade uh, end hinge here, which we'll just position for now. All right, now I need to check that we got freedom, and we have. So what I'm gonna do is get everything into position. Make sure the hinges which haven't been epoxied when I do the rotation here are not moving, which means I'm on the center line of the uh, rounded leading edge here on the elevator. So I'm going to do this. And now I'm just going to lay a little mark. And yes, I'm using a felt tip pen, but it does come off. Plus I have to paint over it anyhow. So I know that this positioning here is good for the rotation. So let's go around and do the other side. All right, let's get this guy lined up. Hope you can see it on the camera. It's uh, kind of an important hinge. There we go. All right, that's in place. All right, let's All right. rotate. needs to come this way a little bit that's the problem here okay i'm gonna uh just remove this and open up those trailing edge uh, holes just a fraction well unfortunately i uh <laughs> didn't have the camera running when i was doing this but anyhow it's pretty much the same as what we did what i'm doing now is just putting some ca fillets on the center hinges or the end hinges and uh Get those in position. Even though they're epoxied, I do want them to. 
have as much strength as possible. Over. So I've got these um, popsicle sticks in the or lolly sticks, as we call them, to uh, just put some tension this way to uh, bring out bring the elevators outwards somewhat. Uh, checking inside, everything looks good. I just noticed there's a glob of shoe goo, which could cause a problem with the down elevator, which we don't really use much on this plane, but I'll clean that off after anyhow. And uh, just checking all the gapping right now. Make sure everything is good. This one might be a bit different. Yeah. There we go. We should be about even Stevens now. Yep. So everything looks uh, pretty good. I'll uh, bring the camera around and show you what it looks like from the bum end. <laughs> Anyhow, let's zoom in. So that's uh, the way it looks right now. So I've got a little bit of a glob of glue there, which would stop the elevator going uh, downwards. Yeah, downwards. So I need to just scrape that off, but I won't do that until everything's cured in place. So there we are, that's the elevators gone in. So you can see that they have to go in first. And then obviously we come along and then we've got the rudders, which we have to do. While the elevators are curing, uh, let's go pop that front uh, retract box in. I've just temporarily put it in place. Uh, there's a panel line which actually goes around here, which is where it meets the front of the uh, the uh, bay door. And the retract, when it's extended down, should be three millimeters set back from that. And that way we get the proper angle of attack. So let's drop the gear. And it looks like I've actually got it right where I need it. <laughs> yeah. So what we've got here is the Takano as a fairly uh, raked forward stance for the strut. And uh, hence that can be designed into the, uh, the uh, nose steer and uh, retract box, which is what we uh, did. So you can see the, that it, uh, the stance is perfect forward. Uh, it's the box is in position. I'll go in and just add some marks so we can outline where the uh, shoe goo is going to go. We'll retract this guy back now. Let's see. Uh, yeah, got a mark there, I believe. Nope. Let's put a mark in front. Then we'll. Uh, We'll sand the uh, inside of the fuselage just to make sure that uh, we have a good bite and then we'll uh, vacuum it out, get the dust out. And uh, then we'll get the sugar one and some weights and get this in place. So let's see, I should be able to just pull it out. Whoops, yep. I need to get a weight on the nose there. Temporarily. Okay, got to wait there. All right, so what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, before doing anything, I'm just going to run a rough sandpaper to just chamfer this a little bit because, you know, the fuselage is curved, so I just want to get a little bit of an angle on there. Nothing big deal, but just to make sure we got it all set down. Like this one's just a bit uh, proud here. I need to get that off. Anyhow, I'll go do that, then we'll get back. Right, we're ready to put it in. So I retested the uh, uh, forward rake of the gear, oops, the position of it, and uh, just to make sure, and then I remarked it, I've sanded it, I've hit it with the uh, alcohol, 
make sure this uh, it's clear and I uh, hope you can see this but basically I'm using a syringe just to put a whole bunch of sugar on here uh, the reason I use a syringe is I've got more control over it okay we've got that bit done so what we're going to do now is apply it around the edges here. And we'll try and get this thing in place. So bear with me. It's hard to get this thing in the camera. So I've got to be super careful. Got to guide this guy in, trying not to hit anything until I get it into the front area, which is right where I've got it now. I'm dropping it down onto my marks. Oh yeah, that's a nice contact there. I'm gonna just move it slightly so it adheres and spreads out. she's good all right now let's see i'll put some weights on the rear of the fuselage because i'm going to be putting some weights on the front here so i don't want this guy flying forward on me the retract box needs to cure along with the elevators now so we'll leave those overnight so part 11 will be the installation of the rudder which is a little tricky uh, along with the uh, servos for the elevators and rudder and the servo tray into the fuselage. Thanks for watching. Please come back, subscribe, make comments, tell me what you would do different. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.